Hello there, and welcome to another episode of your weekly magazine program, Energy and You. I'm Egusa Igumbo. We focus on the activities of the Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited. The program enlightens and educates you on developments in and around the energy space. On the show tonight, NNPC Limited assures of its capacity to deliver on gas as a transition fuel for Nigeria and Africa. And bridging the gender gap in the energy sector, stakeholders identify effective tools for an all-encompassing sectoral development. Plus, a boost for capacity expansion and effective workforce, NNPC Limited encourages staff training on critical skills requirements. Thanks for staying with us. We begin the program with top stories making the rounds in the energy space. Real Estate Nigeria shifts to renewable energy. With growing demands for decarbonization, contributors to the growth of the economy are key into greener credentials. Global oil price gains over 6% and OPEC plus cuts from Saudi Arabia, balancing concern about weakening global growth that may dampen fuel demand. Progress on resuming Iraq northern oil exports in view. OPEC and allies, including Russia, surprised the market with a new round of production cuts starting in May. Those are your top stories in the energy sector this week. Now with Africa's stance on energy transition and gas becoming increasingly topical, countries are taking steps to promote renewable energy and reduce greenhouse gas emissions. They are all at the same time leveraging their natural gas resources to support economic growth, development, and more importantly, energy sufficiency and security. At a gathering of industry players at the 2023 edition of the annual Library Lecture Series and Energy Forum, stakeholders discussed measures, policies and initiatives Nigeria can explore and is already exploring to promote sustainable energy and reduce its carbon footprints while using gas as a gradual transition mechanism. God bless the Federal Republic of Nigeria we may be seated. Speaking to the theme for the 2023 edition, Effective Gas Resources Utilization, a lever for enhancing energy security and achieving net zero emission goals in Nigeria. The array of presentations made at the Oloibiri Lecture Series and Energy Forum, OLEF, an annual event organized by the Society of Petroleum Engineers, SPE, were focused on the importance of utilizing Nigeria's abundant gas resources to first ensure energy sufficiency through adequate access to energy while aligning with global energy transition. Delivering his remarks on state of the industry, the Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Petroleum Resources, highlighted the efforts the ministry has made so far through the various policies. He noted that these efforts that are currently translating into support mechanisms for gas utilization in Nigeria includes development of a competitive and efficient gas market, incentives for the use of gas and power generation, amongst other critical roles. This infrastructure is essential for ensuring that gas is available when and where it is needed, especially in expanding domestic utilization. And it can also help to reduce the cost of gas by increasing competition and efficiency. We are already achieving very amiable results in the domestic intake of LPG and CNG in several small and medium scale industries across the country. A keynote address on industry operations was delivered by the Group Chief Executive Officer of NNPC Limited. Mr. Mele Kiari pointed out that leveraging on the provisions of the Petroleum Industry Act, PIA, to attract robust investments in the Nigerian petroleum sector in order to guarantee access to energy while aligning with the global energy transition has become paramount. 
An NPC Limited has set this in motion through its leading role in ensuring the realization of government's natural gas expansion program and deepening natural gas utilization as an alternative transportation fuel and an important feedstock for the development of gas-based industries. There are several possibilities and engagements that we are doing to see some floating LNGs in the county. They will work. We will make it work. You know, and for us now, we will run, we'll run solar if no one will do because we can support, we're a huge company, we're a 60 billion dollar company. So we can run without help, but we need help, but we'll run without help. I think this is what the assurance I've given the permanent secretary. No one will stop us, no one will keep us on the power box. In addition, as part of its sustainability strategy, the Nigerian National Petroleum Company, NNPC Limited, is deploying carbon reduction initiatives to gradually decarbonize operations and improve compliance with global emission reduction. Other key issues discussed at the event dwelt on upstream industry regulations, midstream and downstream industry regulations, long-term plans to maximize the use of gas, and a monetization policy of gas. Viable infrastructural presence being a key hurdle to overcome, as well as effective use of the domestic gas fund provided by the PIA. More participants spoke to the need for proper management of assets and generation of stronger cash flow mechanisms through cheaper funding alternatives. The midstream and downstream gas infrastructure fund, MDGI, created by the PIA 2021, which is domiciled in authority as a directorate, is a key lever and enabler of risking investment in the midstream and downstream gas value chain. Irrespective of what we say, irrespective of what we do, as long as we are not working to reduce social and economic inequality, by recognizing that the global, the global social political balance can only be attained if there is availability of sufficient, affordable, reliable, accessible, and sustainable energy supply. In our energy mix, 80% is going to the power sector. So where does that leave us? It means that the, the gas sector is, is exposed to the challenges, the current challenges in the power sector. And we know what those are. It's a liquid, um, cost-reflective tariff, non-cost-reflective tariffs, and the like. Um, and so some of the issues we need to be thinking about is how we can diversify um, the market for our gas. So that's a very key issue. The brainstorming session is expected at the end of the day to identify the challenges hindering potential gas utilization, which includes poor infrastructure in gas exploration and production, unstable pricing regimes, unfavorable policies, and global economic factors. At the end of this session, a communique would be put forward, put together, and sent to different arms, National Assembly, the, uh, the ministries, the oil companies, places like uh, the National Oil Company also, and the NMPC. Those outline solutions will be there, suggestions, recommendations, and there would be a push after that just to ensure that uh, these recommendations are actually uh, put in place and achieved. Now, every year since March 8, 1917, the International Women's Day is being widely celebrated globally to highlight the contributions of women to the development of the society. The day is also used to drum up support for women-related issues. This year, the Women in Energy Network decided to celebrate the Women's History Month and the International Women's Day in a special way. They held a summit and an awards ceremony to raise awareness on the need to have more women in the energy sector in Nigeria. Speakers at the event lamented the relatively low number of women operating at various levels in the Nigerian energy sector and called for level playing field to allow more women into the sector. They urged young women to leverage on innovation and technology to hone their skills in order to tap into the limitless opportunities in the energy sector. Some of the speakers also advocated the need for the girl child to be encouraged to study the science, technology, engineering and mathematics, STEM related and professional courses that are more relevant to the energy sector. And we can do better and women are rising. But it is something that has to be strategic. It has to be intentional. 
to be able to be there strategically, intentionally, a vision and mission that you have to be there. Whenever you want anything, an office, a position, you have to dress like them, speak like them, learn like them, volunteer to be in their midst, know what they do, so that you can be like them. Unpredictable shifts in demand and supply of energy on a global scale and sustained high energy prices. We need women more than ever before to bring to bear their ingenuity, resourcefulness, and capacity to lead this effort. We need to leverage on technology to address the emerging issues such as combating climate change, managing energy transition, reducing economic and energy poverty, and ensuring sustainability. Dwelling on the theme of the summit, The Limitless Woman, some of the speakers emphasized the need to create a healthy space in the sector for the Nigerian woman to do more, stressing that it should not be seen as a competition between men and women, but a complementary stride that could bring men and women to work together to develop the country. I think Nigeria cannot lose, afford to lose women that are well educated or, or well trained or have lots of skills. They can't afford it, especially if you want to develop the nation and use all these frontiers. And we have used Rwanda to set a standard around the world that women in leadership make a difference. They make a difference in almost all sectors. So we are not looking at women to be there because they are women. We're looking because we want to transform societies. For us to be a limitless woman, we need to be proactive with our health. Taking care of how you're sitting, taking care of um, your body, your mind. A lot of people are labored with mental stress. They're not able to um, decompress because they're trying to meet up targets. So we need to take time to rest, to pause. The chairman of the board of directors of NNPC Limited, Senator Marjorie Chubal Kadibo, was celebrated and commended for showing leadership in the oil sector. According to stakeholders at the event, Chubal Kadibo is a sterling example of what women can do in the energy sector if given the opportunity. From the robust deliberations at the summit organized by the Women in Energy to mark the 2023 International Women's Day, there is no doubt that Nigeria stands to gain more from getting more women involved, not just in the energy sector, but also in governance at the various levels of national life. Thank you very much for that report. The International Energy Agency estimates only about 16% of women in the traditional energy sector. And at management and leadership levels, the numbers are even lower. Now with the sector going through a process of transformation, there is a pressing need to involve more women for innovative solutions and business models to have greater participation from a diverse talent pool. Nigeria is no exception. To this end, there have been rigorous campaigns for gender parity, especially as the country transitions from hydrocarbon to gas. To help us identify these challenges and ways Nigeria can utilize the female talent pool to achieve a smoother transition process, we are joined by Erelu, Florida, Okonowo Miss, an oil and gas consultant and a member of Women in Energy, Oil and Gas. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Talk to us about some of the challenges that women face in a seemingly dominated male energy sector in Nigeria. And against the background of, you know, the 16 percent, you know, that IEA estimates about women in the energy sector, do you think that enough is being done at the moment, you know, to increase this to 40 percent in, say, another two years? All they need to do is to ensure that in all aspects of oil and gas industry, where women are concerned, they, they, there should be um, encouragement in all strata. There should be human capacity development for them. And there should be the opportunity to promote them as and when due so that they can rise, you know, not really shoulder to shoulder with their male counterparts, but at least 
um, there's an increment there's an increase in the in the promotion and the development and the growth of the women in the oil and gas industry 40 percent is realizable 50 percent is realizable if the government is really serious in all the policies that they have made and implementation is key in all these policies and monitoring is part of it as well so it's realizable they can do it but beyond just expecting you know, government to act in terms of political will and commitment to this, um, you know, advocacy. There is the major challenge that we have that seems to be at the primary level where we see young girls who graduate with good results but are unable or are forced to abandon this profession. How can we address this issue at the grassroots? It could be a societal problem. It could be an economical problem on the part of the parents. It could be lack of interest on the, on the, on the part of the child, in, you know, herself. So, you know, the, the, the necessary environment, enabling environment to make, to try and bring them back into the classroom, to go and bring them back on track, to be interested and to let them know that there's a future ahead of them. Right. Whereby they can actually make something good of themselves. They can be useful to themselves. They can be useful to their families. They can be useful to the nation. We should be able to, to make them to realize all that. And that is bringing them back into the fold of reorientating them about the prospects of the future. The NNPC um, you know, Limited has been at the forefront of championing this campaign to end gender gap in the energy sector. Um, but from what you've seen so far, what level of impact do you think NNPC's partnership with women in the sector have on you know, this fight? NNPC has 18% of women inclusion in their whole system altogether. And we were actually given statistics and their way forward program on how to make it a 40% or 50% in the nearest future, which I think is achievable. Knowing NMPC, that they, they say what they mean and they mean what they say. Right. And they have the interest of women. If you look at NMPC altogether, the women, they are happy. I see it in them, they are very happy, they are encouraged, they are motivated. And I think all this boils down to all the uh, benefits and all the programs that they have in-house. I think they have very strong human you know, development programs for their staff. They train them as and when do you. And, and I think their promotion too is top-notch. And I think with all this, NMPC is um, like a pace setter right. in the industry. To make us realize the fact that women can actually achieve their dreams. They can actually achieve the target of their development and growth in the industry. Okay, now, now while we understand women's advocacy, you know, for inclusion in the energy sector, we also know that they are key players in the climate and energy transition. Looking at these two together, do you think that they can be done or fought as one and same? And do you think that they can deliver on the expectations? Women that are involved in the industry, they're all, you know, they're all educated to that level to understand the fact that they can bring in their own solutions to the problems, you know, at large. And they can actually, they can impact right. the re what is expected from these two, that is the climate and the energy. Women are key factors in making sure that the climate is not, a, is not is conducive for, for children, for ourselves, for everybody, and that the, the energy works also. It's, it's a partnership that works between the women and the whole setup. Well, that's much we can take on uh, this segment of the program. Thank you very much indeed for joining us on well, we've been speaking with oil and gas consultant Erelu Florida Okonowa Miss, who is also a member of Women in Energy, Oil and Gas. Well, let's take a quick break, and when we return, we'll bring you one of the support mechanisms by NNPC Limited to ensure premium service delivery by staff. Stay with us. What do we do at NNPC? Since inception as the National Oil Company of Nigeria, our mandate has been to serve the nation by meeting the energy needs of over 200 million people. Over the years, we have invested in tomorrow's leaders and contributed to the development of communities across the nation. We have grown a network of over 500 service stations. 
We are the driving force behind the constantly growing Nigerian economy. With an efficient distribution network servicing all parts of the country, we ensure the highest quality standards in our crude refining processes. Nigeria boasts of immense oil and gas reserves which we explore in commercial quantities, providing endless opportunities for economic development. As we drilled for oil, we discovered vast amounts of gas, up to 200 trillion scope. By harnessing gas, we have reduced gas flaring and invested in liquefaction plants, shipping gas across the globe. Our energy footprint is remarkable. We supply gas to the domestic market for power generation, reaching all across Nigeria. Powering everything, anywhere and everywhere. NNPC, energy for today, energy for tomorrow. Oh, energy for tomorrow. So come on, come on, let's go. Glad to have you back. You're still watching Energy and You, and I'm Erosa Igumbo. And we're updating you on the activities of the Nigerian National Petroleum Company, NNPC Limited. Now, in its drive for capacity expansion in the post-PIA era, the need to continuously enhance and upskill manpower resources in the energy sector cannot be overstressed. Staying true to its theme to expand capacity, NNPC Limited approved staff participation at a public leaders forum organized by the Ike Mokwede Foundation in collaboration with the Blavatnik School of Government of the University of Oxford. After six rigorous months of training and intellectual tasking activities, a new class of public leaders emerged at the graduating ceremony of the class of 2022. The highly competitive program, which is directed towards African public sector executives across state and federal ministries, departments and agencies, seeks to equip participants with cutting-edge public leadership skills, as well as practical tools required to surmount the complex challenges of public service in a rapidly changing world. At the Ike Mokwede Foundation, our theory of change is that an African public sector that is effective values-driven and results-focused will lead to significant measurable improvements in Africa's economic, social, and political performance. And of course, a better life for its citizens. And if you ask anybody in this room, Nigerian or not, I think if Nigeria's public sector performs, Africa's public sector performs. Delivering the keynote lecture for the event, Former Chairman of the Independent National Electoral Commission, Professor Atahiru Jega, addressed the topic, Public Sector Leadership in Times of Crisis. The Nigerian public sector has for long been in dire need of what I call recomposition. For it to efficiently and effectively deliver public goods and services in order to re-establish capacity of the Nigerian state to play one of its key roles, which is the deployment of state resources for the satisfaction of citizens' needs and aspirations through delivery of public goods and services that promote, protect, and defend human security. Charging the graduates to apply what they have learned in the course of the fellowship the coordinator of the program at the University of Oxford, Professor Chris Stone, applauded them for their dedication to the process and for the projects they had respectively carried out. He gave a summary of the six themes covered during the program to include governing in times of challenge and change, integrity, the pitfalls in decision making, strengthening public organizations, harnessing technology, and leadership and authority. We urge this program um, to, en to encourage all, all members of the cohort as they move further into the service, make what we call wise decisions. Widen the options that you're considering before you make a decision. Interrogate the proposals before you. And think about using 
what, are, what, the, what the experts in this field call red teaming, assigning people in every team, a couple of people to challenge whatever the emerging consensus is so it's really tested more thoroughly. Joining 45 other public servants from different sectors across the African continent were seven staff of the Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited. This impressive representation is in tandem with the company's theme for 2023, which has been dubbed the Year of Capacity Expansion. It's a leadership program. The essence of the program is to teach best practice um, management principles for how to lead in the public service. Integrity, how to strengthen public organizations, um, how to work with technology to, to, to perform um, initiatives at scale and things of that nature. You know, I've come with the mindset that regardless of how tough the environment is, challenging the environment is, you know, I, I can... I, can, I know how to forge ahead and navigate, you know, how to go about, you know, my duties, my deliberations with, my, with all stakeholders in the game. So it's really been an awesome, awesome experience and I'm, I'm glad I was part of it. Quite a lot of things, how to tell stories while leading, how to use your soft power to achieve things. Well, that's the much we can take on today's episode of the program. NNPC Limited is positioned to deliver on its mandate as a dynamic energy company that will set Nigeria on the path of shared prosperity through the deliverables of its numerous business entities. You can visit our website for more insights and updates on these strides undertaken by the company or on the social media handles showing on your screen. Thank you for watching. I'm Elgusa Igumbo. We'll see you again next week.